and you too. We're going to have a live session this afternoon. Welcome to my office, guys. Welcome to my office. I'm um, interrupting your day briefly. Join me briefly. This isn't going to be very long. I want to share with you some a um, couple of stories to encourage you today and to show you what's possible. So come on into my office and spend some time with me, spend a few minutes with me. Also, as you're coming on board, say hello. Okay. Hey there, Christo. Say hello and tell me what city, country, um, wherever you're located today, just let me know today so that um, I'll see who is on. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So I see that. Um, hey there, Diane. Thanks for joining. Hey, say hey, hey, hey. Um, YouTube, thank you so much for being with me. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey. I'm an immigration lawyer in New York, in White Plains, New York. Um, servant clients everywhere, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that, everywhere. I'm not in a great hurry today, but, and I'm not, but I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. I'd like to just pop in and just share some joy with you, a little bit of my spirit, a little bit of, you know, what, what's happening here at McBean Law. Hopefully this will encourage you and help you to understand um, what can happen. What can happen to some people who are in a very difficult immigration situation or an immigration, have an immigration problem. Hey there, Chicago is in the house. Hey there, Bibi. Tolu, thank you for being with me. Um, Guys, our office is open Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern. You can call us at 888-462-4006 to book an appointment with one of us attorneys to talk about your immigration problem. Also, go on our website to see what kinds of uh, work we do, uh, legal work that we do, and how we've been helping people around the world. Um, mcbeanlaw.com and then forward slash success to see and read some of our stories. If you have not yet subscribed to our newsletter, and I think I'm a little dark up there uh, with you guys on TikTok, my apologies, the, um, uh, but I think you should be able to see me fine. If you have not yet subscribed guys to our newsletter, subscribe now at mcbeanlaw.com forward slash subscribe. Get on the inside with us and see some of the Q and A's that we do each week. We, we're answering questions via email. Um, we also send out a terrific news summary video on Fridays. And then certainly Sundays for us is all about good news. Now this particular setup here with my mic, I believe it's it's connected only to YouTube and Facebook at this time. Um, now in this short session, friends, um, I first of all, every case is different. Past successes never guarantees a similar future outcome, right? But you know, I want you to feel encouraged as you're hearing about some of the good things that happened this year in 2023 at McBean Law and um, and end the new year, the, the old year, end this year on a high note. You've got to rev yourself up, particularly if you're in a tough immigration jam. You might be at work right now and maybe you're on your lunch break at work and you're feeling really down about your immigration situation. You're wondering, when is my change going to come? What's going on with my case? The lawyer may not be communicating with me or I feel like I'm in the dark. And you're wondering what is happening with your life, period. Because with immigration, you can feel like your life has stopped. If anyone has ever felt that way, give me some hearts, likes, and let me know that I'm not alone in this, that sometimes when you have that tough immigration problem, you feel like your life has stopped, like you're stuck. And that's an awful feeling, an awful feeling. I see those hearts coming in. Thank you. That's a very tough position to be in. And even today, I had people in my office who were crying. They were very down about their situation. And I shared with them how we could help them, how we could help them move forward and what's potentially possible for them. 
but don't let your immigration problem be everything to you to the point where you feel depressed and down. Just know that there's a lot more to life than this and that you can get through this. And thank God we're at 2023, the end of 2023 together. If you were with me last year, December 2022, around this time, give me some hearts and likes. If you remember me sharing on a live session, very similar to this one, that immigration is all about freedom. How many of you remember that? Okay, freedom. It's, it's about giving our clients the freedom to be their best in the U.S., if you remember me saying that last year, this time, let me know that you remember that. Freedom to be your best in the U.S. Now, you may not be at your best right now because of this problem, but just know that it's possible to get over it. In, in many cases, it is possible to get over that wall. Some people, no, they cannot get over it yet because of a legislative fix that's required. But for most others, it's possible to get over it, okay? So I just want you to be encouraged as we go into two stories that um, one we shared, I want to say we're, I'm still in May, okay? The May testimonials. Yeah, this is from May. And this story, guys, is about a man who um, had been in the United States for a very long time. Um, let me take, take you into the story, but he has been here for a very long time and his status was still very messed up, very, very messed up for a very long time. And because primarily because he could not prove how he entered the United States, friends, he couldn't prove that he entered the United States lawfully. Although he has the proper, he has a, a U.S. citizen wife, that doesn't always solve every problem, right? Um, so let me uh, share with you briefly that he consulted with us last year, June, about his problem. And he had filed for adjustment of status back in 2000, 2011 through his U.S. citizen wife. And that application was denied because he wasn't able to prove his entry. My goodness, it got dark in here so fast. <laughs> you cannot, ah, oh, it got dark. Bear with me. Okay, so he didn't have his I-94 record, okay, um, because he lost his passport. And uh, no, it was stolen. His passport was stolen. And when he hired the firm, of course, the first thing we did was we uh, requested his records from the government to see what what's in his record that could possibly prove lawful entry into the United States. We found his CBP customs records showing that he did enter into uh, the country in, at, through JFK in 1998. Um, but truly a little bit more was needed actually to get this, to get him to the point of proving his entry. So we prepared his adjustment of status case along with the form I-102 to get his arrival record. And typically, typically the I-102 is filed first to see, well, if, you know, if will the government issue him a new record? Sometimes they do not. If they issue him a new record, that's great. Then you can take that new record and then apply for adjustment of status. In this case, we made the strategic decision to do both at the same time. And we got a lot of evidence to prove that he was in the United States in those early days and some of the facts around his entry we were able to include in the case. And we, um, uh, we filed the case and we were able to get his entry record, get the government to issue a new one. Really, that's what this is. We got the government to issue a new I-94. So we're so thrilled by that. And um, let's see, let me just put this up on the screen while I'm telling the stories. So that's how we were able to solve that problem. Okay. Now, um, for other people, and this is a tip, for other people who 
who cannot prove how they entered the United States. If you cannot prove how you entered the United States that you entered with inspection and lawfully, then the government will tell you you're ineligible to adjust your status and get your green card here. They would want you to go back home. Okay, they'd want you to go back home to finish your process at a U.S. embassy. But thank God. And that's what this client had been told for years when he was trying to change his status. It just adjust his status. But thankfully, we were able to convince the government of his entry and they issued him a new I-94. Now, the second story that I want to touch on, guys, this client, she has been in the United States for more than 20 years. She entered in uh, 2002. And this is a removal case involving a woman from Ghana. And this is one of my favorite stories as well from this year. Um, we uh, were able to get a joint motion to reopen her 2006 removal case. Okay, so she had been trying for years. She had a lawyer when she came to us. She had a lawyer last year, June, again, June, and she felt like she wasn't seeing any results. Her case was like at a standstill and she felt stuck uh, because of this old removal order from 2006. And when we heard her story, we, of course, did our case assessment, which you guys hear me talk about very frequently. We like to study first so that we understand what we're, what we, uh, what's on your record and what's possible for you. So we did that for her. And she, um, we, uh, so she entered with her visa lawfully. And after coming into the United States, she married her U.S. citizen husband. And in 2004, her husband filed an I-130 uh, for her and they were interviewed. Um, unfortunately, and this happens, this, this happens quite a, a bit with some cases, the interview didn't go very well and her husband withdrew his petition. And when a spouse withdraws a petition, you could feel like, oh my God, this is the end of the road for me. This is it. This is it. This man pulled out his, his, with his um, petition and now I'm stuck. What in the world, right? So she felt that way. And um, let's see, where am I in the story? So um, so the, her case was denied. His case was denied. The I-130 was denied. And then um, a month later, she was placed in removal proceedings as a visa overstay. This is a pattern that the government has, guys, when you um, are supposed to appear for an interview. And if you if you, one of your spouse doesn't appear and you and and you don't have a good explanation for it um, and you don't try to reschedule, they can put you in removal thinking the case is a fraud case, or if your spouse abruptly withdraws the petition at that critical point, again, they could also put you in removal like what they did with our client, thinking that something is wrong here with her case. Um, so they placed her in removal right away. And um, in uh, September, 2006, she requested to change her venue from Atlanta to Connecticut because she was now a resident of Connecticut. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't clear whether the immigration court ever received that motion to change her court, her venue. So in 2006, the Atlanta immigration judge issued her a removal order after not receiving, um, after she didn't appear at the hearing that was scheduled in Atlanta. After this, her marriage ended in divorce. 10 years later, thank God for a decade, right? <laughs> thank God for a decade. 10 years later, her son grew up, her US citizen son grew up and he filed an I-130 petition for her and it was approved September, 2017. However, she still could not adjust her status because only an immigration judge had jurisdiction over her case at that time because of how she entered the country lawfully with a visa. So USCIS could not approve a green card application for her. Um, so she met with lawyers over the years who told her just wait until President Trump was no longer in office before she attempt to fix her status. And so she waited um, and Biden came into the office. And anyway, so she came to us and we worked on a PD prosecutorial discretion request, a uh, joint motion to reopen her case. And we sent it to the Atlanta field office, tough field office, guys, tough field office. 
um, very conservative, but we sent it to the Atlanta office and they approved it. They joined in and uh, reopened and terminated her removal case. And it we submitted it on June 8th, 2023. And just a few days later, guys, June 13th, 2023, they approved it. Now, let me say this, okay? With motion to reopen old removal cases, and this is just another little tip here, with motions to re, uh, motion to reopen and terminate, every field office, DHS office, operates at a different pace, different pace, different schedule, different results. Um, results really vary. Um, some field, some offices say it's going to take us nine to 12 months to look at this. We're really not prioritizing motions to reopen. So that does happen. Whereas others, other DHS offices, they work fast and they get it done. And so we were really thankful at that time that although, um, this whole issue about prosecutorial discretion was still really tied up in litigation. The, the Atlanta field office agreed to reopen our client's old case. As another thing I'd like to share with you guys about reopening cases is that sometimes ICE doesn't like to join those kinds of cases, the cases where you don't show up to court, you don't cooperate with prosecution. However, we have seen a few cases this year where they, including one, uh, I think about a, couple, a week or two ago, um, where the removal order was issued in absentia and they did join us and they reopened the client's case to get it terminated. So it, um, although they don't like it, sometimes they do it. And I'm so happy when it does work out for our clients. So guys, those are just a couple of success stories that I wanted to share with you briefly today. Share this with other people. Encourage yourself in this year on a high note. You've got to get yourself psyched up. You've got to be positive. You've got to work with the right people. Reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk with you about your immigration problems. See what we do online. Go to mcbeanlaw.com forward slash success to see what we've done and the types of work that um, cases that we take reach out to us, call us at 888-462-4006. And um, thank you guys so much for spending a few minutes, 17 minutes with me this afternoon. Um, I will see you in the next one, guys. Happy holidays. And thank you so much for being with me.